My name is Shane Kukau. Uh, this is a video message to the principal and the administrators of John Tonkin College in Mandurah. Uh, I want to talk to you about my experience as a gay student when I was at your school, when it was still called Mandurah High School and Mandurah Senior College. This was 10 years ago. I want to talk to you about this because I think it's important that you understand what it feels like to be a gay student growing up at this school. Now at the time when I was uh, at high school, I was just coming to terms with the fact that I was gay. My family didn't know about it, my friends didn't know about it, and as a result, I, not because I didn't have any friends, but because there was no one I could talk to about it, I was completely alone. But kids know, or sometimes they just think they know that you're gay, and as a result, they act differently and they treat you differently. And this can be an incredibly uh, scary and isolating experience. Now, while I was at Mandurah High School, I experienced physical violence a number of times. Uh, I was punched when I was standing in line for home economics class on what you can now call the uh, Tyndale campus. Uh, I was beaten in front of the English classroom. Once I was chased out of the school grounds by a boy who had a stone in a sock and was brandishing it at me. Now, these sorts of experiences weren't common, but they did happen a number of times throughout my high school experience. But they weren't what hurt the most. What hurt the most was the silence and the little things that people would say. In health class, sexuality and questioning gender identity, things like that, uh, they weren't talked about. What was talked about, the one time that uh, being gay ever came up in our uh, health class, was when we were, sat down to watch a video about a gay man with AIDS. If that's the only thing that you see as a student who's growing up gay, what you come to understand is that to be gay is to be ill, to be sick, to die. The way that other students talked, it would, was very easy for me to, to come to believe that nobody at our school thought that it was okay to be gay. Uh, the only time that you ever heard other kids talk about sexuality and gender was when they were insulting each other calling each other gay or calling each other queer. And what I came to understand from that was that I was gross. I was disgusting. I was something to be laughed at. That's a horrible thing for you to come to believe about yourself as a kid. Now at the time I didn't have the words for it, but I was severely depressed. I felt completely alone and isolated, and many times I contemplated ending my life. I didn't have the words to describe that to myself or to admit it to a counsellor or a support officer. The only support officer that I ever saw was a chaplain and I was <laughs> well smart enough to know that a chaplain is not someone that you talk to about sexuality and gender for obvious reasons. Now I was lucky. Uh, eventually I found the strength to come out to my friends and I found them to be accepting, and I found them to, to be people who wanted to still have me around. Uh, I went on to go to university, and I learned more about sexuality and gender, and I came to understand that I wasn't disgusting, and that I was normal, and that what was wrong was the way that I was treated and the way that people talked about people like me. I went on to become a youth worker. I went on to become a youth worker because I wanted to stop other people from going through the same things that I went through. I wanted to be able to, to help other students not to go through the hell that high school was for me. And I've learned a few things since then. I now work in mental health and I know the impact of that kind of experience on a young person's mental health. When you're a teenager, your brain is going through a huge and rapid period of growth and development. And what it's doing is it's, uh, it's pruning away the thought processes that you don't use and it's uh, making more efficient and easier to use the thought processes that you do use day by day. Now, if you spend your five years at high school being isolated, feeling that you're disgusting, being severely depressed, that carves a huge groove in the uh, developing teenage brain. And that sort of thing takes a lifetime to get over. I was lucky that when I went to university, I found acceptance and that I found uh, a community which supported me to become confident and self-aware. But if I didn't have those things, I would still be now dealing with severe depression. 
Language matters. It matters now just as much as it did when I was at high school, the things that people say. And so when we see in the media uh, liberal members of parliament calling gay people pedophiles, linking programs like Safe Schools, which seek to educate people about sexuality and gender, to pedophilia and child grooming. It has a huge impact on young people who are growing up uh, and finding that they are having same-sex attraction or questioning their gender identity. It has a huge impact on every one of us who has been through that before, who has been through school and found themselves to be isolated and alone, who has thought that they were disgusting because of what people did or did not say. These words hurt. They cut us deep. And the reason that they cut us deep is because that now we live every day with that little bit of fear of violence, with that little bit of fear that the next person we meet is going to think that we're disgusting or horrible or someone that shouldn't be around children. We live with that little bit of understanding that we will never be completely acceptable to society. Can you imagine what it feels like to know that at your core, to always doubt that you're normal? It's reasons like this that programs like Safe Schools are important. I have nieces and nephews that are starting school now, and some of them might turn out to be gay, some of them might turn out to question their gender identity and to want to change at some point. And it matters when people talk about things like this in the media, and it matters what kind of school they're going to go to. I know that gay and queer are still used as insults. I know that many people still don't understand what it is to be transgendered. I didn't understand what it meant to be transgendered when I was at school. Can you imagine what it's like for someone who is questioning their gender and nobody around them can talk to them about what they're going through because they don't understand? I know that parents still teach their kids that we're disgusting, that we're wrong. And I know those kids are going to school and they're going to take those attitudes with them. But I also know that a brave school can change that. A brave school can change that by educating its staff and by working to change the culture of the school. If teachers talk about sexuality and gender identity in the classroom, if they're trained to be able to, to say something when students are uh, making negative comments about sexuality and gender, if there are posters and information around which make it visible that sexuality and gender are okay and a normal thing, we won't feel so alone. Future students won't feel so alone. If kids have support options that aren't chaplains, that are trained staff, school counsellors or, or just teachers who are trained to understand sexuality and gender, then they won't have to feel like there's no help available when they're struggling with what they're going through. Please be a brave school. Join the Safe Schools program and educate your staff and make the school a more accepting and welcoming place for the students that are there now. The resources and the training are available and you can use them. Even if the federal government does pull funding from the program in 2017, just being a member of the Safe Schools program makes a statement of support for sexuality and gender diverse students. It also makes a statement that you're a school that believes this is an important program. In Victoria and in the ACT, those state and territory governments have decided to fund the Safe Schools program and to roll it out in its current form without any restrictions and changes to uh, make it available only to, to students whose parents are okay with them being gay. Because they believe in this program, the WA state government can do the same thing if we show that there's support for these sorts of programs in our schools. Show them that this matters, because it does. Thank you for hearing my story and for thinking about my request. I hope that my nieces and my nephews will be able to go to a safe school.